Hello! Hey guys, how are we doing today? Um, this video, I'm going to be talking about cards I'm going to miss from the 1-9 Karazhan expansion. Um, it was obviously a smaller expansion, it was actually an adventure, so there weren't as many cards in it as a normal expansion. Um, but it did have a lot of good cards that have seen quite a lot of play, and some cards that maybe haven't seen as much play as they should have done or uh, or could have done. Um, first card I'm going to be talking about is Arcane Giant. Um, Arcane Giant, I think, has actually been really, really good um, for the game. There's been a few decks it's seen competitive play in. There's been um, Druid decks that have lots of spells in, like token-based Druid decks that can quite easily get a zero mana Arcane Giant out in the mid-game. Uh, there's been some mage decks, uh, quest mage with giants in, or just some mage decks that play a lot of spells. Um, and can get giant out yep, really cheap, really quickly. Um, and also rogue, like miracle rogue has, uh, has seen arcane giant in a little bit. Um, it's one of the better giants, I think. Like there's some giants that kind of don't really see any play or see play depending on the meta, or see play in just one specific deck. Where if Arcane, whereas like Arcane Giant's one that can kind of like, there's a few places it can slot into. Um, it's it's never going to be completely irrelevant. Like you could always make a deck that could use Arcane Giants in if you're just playing a deck with a lot of spells in. Um, and yeah, I think it's just been a really good card. So this is what one I'll miss. Um, it might even be my favorite giant. I think of all the giants, Arcane Giant's probably my favorite giant. Um, yeah. Rip Arcane Giant. Dup. Next we have Catrick. Um, Catrick is one of the most powerful Hunter secrets at the moment. Um, it's been really strong. Even though Hunter ha as a class hasn't been that competitive really recently. Um, it's been really good combined with, uh, combined with Cloaked Huntress. Um, and it's probably been the best hunter secret against control uh, like if, if hunter is playing a lot of minions in the early game and then they're playing against a control deck and the control deck has to uh like basically play spells to remove your early threats and catrick is just a way of kind of slowing the control deck down and um and stopping them in their tracks essentially Catrick ha isn't really that good against other aggressive decks because generally a lot of the ag aggressive decks are fairly minion heavy and so Catrick can sometimes sit around not seeing that much play. Uh, I mean, not, not act being activated, but the, its power level against control and other mid-range decks has been so powerful. It's... Uh, I, I am going to miss this card. I think it's actually been a really good secret for Hunter. Like, there's some secrets that kind of get printed and then don't see much play, or see play all the time. And this is one of the secrets that is, that is in almost every, almost every Hunter deck that's playing secrets is probably going to be playing this card. But it's just, it, it's it's so good, I'm going to miss it. <laughs> like it's one of those cards where like, it's obviously very strong, but not to the point where it's like, completely overpowered. It's just very strong, but also a really, a really fun card. Next card is Babbling Book. Babbling Book's a fun little guy, 1-1-1-1 one, 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 creator. Or had a random mate spell to your hand. Obviously, mostly remembered for uh, the world moment Pavel played it in the uh, in the World Finals, and it's it's nothing amazing. It's just a fun little card. It was played in Tempo Mage for a while because Tempo Mage Mage needed some other a one drop that uh, other than Mana Worm to help get on the board early to contest against the Ragro decks. Um, but then it's also seen playing like uh, Quest Mage to add extra spells that didn't start in your deck to your hand, so you can complete the quest quickly. Um, it's just been a fun little card that has popped up here and there, and it's just an overall good card. Like, mage do have a lot of good spells, so a lot of the time when you're playing Babbling Book, you kind of know you're fairly likely to get something useful. I mean, sometimes you'll get something like Shatter, which, I mean, sometimes you can use, but a lot of the time you won't be able to get a use for it. Um, but generally, mage have very powerful spells, so Babbling Book has been... It's been solid, and I'll be sad to see its little happy face go. Dup. <laughs> Next, we have Medivh. Now, Medivh has been in multiple decks. Uh, the weapon, Atiesh, has been a big, big threat. Um, 
Like, the fact that you can play, like, big spells and cr get... Like, play the big spell and get the tempo of creating a big minion with it has been really huge. Uh, Druid has, has played Medivh quite a bit. Mage has played Medivh a fair amount as well. Um, seen, seen it even Priest. I mean, it's, it's been in a, a, a few different classes. And... It's been one of those late game cards where it's not like you play it and it's instantly OP. It's not like Ragnaros, for example, where you play it and it's instantly doing things and it's instantly a big threat you've got to deal with. Uh, Tyrion is another example. You play it and it's got Taunt, it's going to smack you in the face and when you kill it, you're just getting smacked in the face even more by the weapon. Whereas Medivh, it's just an 8 mana 7 7. It's not that scary at first. Um, like, it's still a body, obviously, you want to kind of kill it. But the real value of Medivh comes through over multiple turns as you play in these big spells. And I actually think this has been a really well-designed card. Um, obviously, there's been ways you can play around it. You can have weapon removal to destroy Atiyesh, and then Medivh's just an 8 mana 7-7, seven, seven, which sucks. There's times that Harrison's been in the meta, and then Harrison's been really good against Medivh, so it's been something that you can kind of play around in some senses, and it's not as soon as you play it, you instantly lose or anything like that, but um, it's, it's just been a great late-game threat for uh, a lot of decks, and... I will definitely miss Medivh. Next, we have Moonglade Portal. Now, Moonglade Portal hasn't really seen any play recently at all. However, when it first came out, it did see a, a fair amount of play. And it always felt like a, a slightly above average power level card. Like, because you're getting a random six cost minion, it's not the same as just having something like a Cairn or a six mana minion or a dark arakura for example or a six mana minion that you know is going to be solid like sometimes you're going to end up getting trashy six mana minions you don't really want but the fact that you're restoring the the six health as well basically means that if you do end up getting a six a, a good six drop this card becomes really good but then there's just the risk level of oh what if i don't get a really good six drop then it's like is it really worth restoring the health for which is why kind of more recently um some more weaker six drops have been printed which has made this card basically worse um, but when this card was seeing play, I, I really liked it. I really liked it. So, I'm going to miss all the portals, really. Actually, no, I'm not going to miss Maelstrom Portal. Actually, I'm not going to miss Phalanx Portal either. That's, yeah. Forget I said that. <laughs> Swashburglar. Now, Swashburglar has been Rogue's go-to one-drop ever since it came out, really. Um, like, with or without patches. Obviously, with patches as well, and having charges, it's actually become really good. Um, but even b before patches, and, um, Swashburglar's just been a good card, and, and the fact that it's one mana basically means that, well, it's just really good in Rogue because you can activate combos, so you can use, like, Swashburglar with, like, an SI7 agent or with Eviscerate or any of these other combo cards, uh, generally cheap cards in Rogue are really effective, um, and so it's just been a cheap little card while getting something on the board in the early game because a lot of the time Rogue daggers on turn two because Rogue's hero power is very powerful and they don't have that many good two drops. Um, so just having the Swash Burglar combined with your dagger on turn two is, is really nice. Um, I do wish that Burgle Rogue had been more of a thing. Like, Burgle Rogue has really just been kind of a meme. I mean, with the new Witchwood expansion, we're actually getting a few new cards that could potentially make that type of Rogue viable. Um, we'll have to wait and see, but I'm definitely going to give it a go, and it's going to be a lot of fun. But Burgle Rogue has always been a, a, a deck that, even though it hasn't had a really high power level, it's always been a lot of fun. And it's a deck I've messed around with so much, and I hope you guys have had a chance to as well. Next card I will miss is Priest of the Feast. Priest of the Feast has been in a lot of, uh, a lot of slower Priest decks, and it's a very good defensive tool. Um, especially when you're in a... My favorite time to play Priest of the Feast, actually, was when Pirate Warrior was really popular. And Pirate Warrior was just crushing everyone. Like, you'd need taunts um, or, or, like, heals. And Priest never really had that many good taunts in the early game. Whereas Priest of the Feast just essentially has taunt against really aggressive decks. Because they, your opponent knows if they don't kill it, it's just going to end up healing you a bunch. Um, and so the kind of threat of it, I've, I've really liked. And... Uh, and yeah, like without it, priest is gonna priest is gonna have a lot less healing options. That's for sure. Um, it's just a this is a very good card. <laughs> okay, the final card I'm gonna be missing from Karazhan is actually Silverware Golem. Now this one's a bit um, controversial because it's a bit of a crazy RNG heavy card. Um, like discard warlock, it's kind of like you can play a discard, say Soulfire, 
and you can discard like Doom God, for example, and that's absolutely terrible. Or you can discard something like Silverware Golem, which is insane, and you get a 3 3 on the board while using the Soul Fire, which is above like a powerful card for one mana. Um, so Silverware Golem has been able to. Like, whenever Discard Warlock has been a thing, Silverware Golem has just been at the core of it. And I actually won my first ever tournament um, with Discard Warlock. And, and Silverware Golem played a, a big part of that. So, I I will definitely miss this guy a lot. And even though it's, it's very RNG heavy, and um, it's, it's a lot of fun. Like, Discard Warlock is always a very fun deck to play. Um, and I will definitely miss playing. I mean, sometimes it's frustrating because you're like trying to discard this certain card and you, you sometimes just get the wrong discards and there's nothing you can really do about that. But um, it's very satisfying when you get the right discards off and you can just do these really powerful tempo plays in the early game. Um, so yeah, gotta miss Silver Golem. Bye bye, Silver Golem. <laughs> I'm wondering if we'll see like more discard things for Warlock in the future or if they're just gonna kind of leave discard alone for a bit. Not really sure. Anyway, these are the cards I'm going to miss from, from Karazhan. Thanks for watching, guys. Catch you later.